The Harlem Renaissance in the 1920s was a time of change where the African American community in New York's Harlem district banded together and redefined American culture. The cause of the new Negro was at the forefront of this movement. This ideal person was proud of their African heritage. The Harlem Renaissance brought in a new wave of literature, art, and music to America. Authors, writers, and poets such as Claude McKay, Sterling Brown, and Gwendolyn Brooks brought the African American culture into the limelight with their pieces speaking about Negro pride, racism, and their daily lives. Langston Hughes perfectly summed up the ideas of the Harlem Renaissance in the field of poetry. Instead of focusing inward and writing cryptically like many American poets did during the Roaring Twenties, Hughes used vernacular, positive language, and familiar themes to appeal to all people, especially the black population. He told stories that applied to him and his community. Some of his most popular poems are The Negro Speaks of Rivers, My People, Wisdom and War, and Harlem. So Mrs. Hurston, tell me about yourself. I was born on January 7th in Eatonville, Florida, around the beginning of the 1900s, a lady never reveals her age, into a poor family of eight kids. I've always had a love for literature, and I've been reading all sorts of mythology since I was little. That's what inspired me to become a novelist. Interesting. Where did you get your education? First, I attended the Morgan Academy in Baltimore for about a year, but then I transferred to the Howard University in D.C., where I met Charles Johnson, a magazine publisher. Once he featured my stories, my life changed forever. Kristen, I've heard not everyone approves of your work. Yes, um, W.E.B. Dubois is among the number of people who disapprove of what I say on my stance on racial, racial oppression. I don't really like focusing on politics in my work. Um, instead, I ex enjoy exploring human nature due to my anthropology background uh, and poverty and racial themes, because I believe that politics just limit freedom of expression. Well, Ms. Hurston, it's a pleasure to have an interview with you. Thank you And so I much. hope so much we get to do it again. Glad to be of service. Hello, I am Professor Daly from Oxford University, and I am here to talk to you about the Harlem Renaissance. <laughs> Well, the art in the Harlem Renaissance. <laughs> the art in the time of the Harlem Renaissance was full of color and life. It used to express great emotion and passion of the people, often using color blocking as a form of expression. Uh, the art was sharp and crisp, jazzy like the style and the music of the time period, a large inspiration of which was the dancing of the flapper era. <laughs> This art piece here describes the emotion and the pain and suffering that the African American people had to endure in their history in America. They were enchained and imprisoned in their slavery, but broke free in the joy of dancing. The use of color and the art and the time expressed great joy and life. The popular new music that came from the Renaissance was jazz. It was born when the African American people had to overcome an unfair society. One way in which they did so was through jazz. Jazz was one of the most influential aspects of the Harlem Renaissance. One of the most popular places to go hear musicians perform was Harlem's own Cotton Club, who featured performers such as Louis Armstrong, Bessie Smith, and Billie Holiday. The Harlem Renaissance inspired the young middle class people to defy their elders and change standards by changing their fashions and dance. Young women began to defy their elders in society by cutting their hair short, wearing short skirts, lowering the neckline of all their clothes, and foregoing their corsets. The young men kept similar fashions, but began to feel more liberated as well. The dances before the Harlem Renaissance were stylized separate from their partners with certain steps like the waltz. After the Harlem Renaissance began, dances like the foxtrot, tango, cakewalk, and kangaroo dip became more popular. These dances consisted of partners pressed tighter together, which was scandalous to the, uh, the elders of society. The Harlem Renaissance popularized jazz and black culture, which led to the entirety of America adopting the artistic fruits of that time of change. Playwrights, poets, artists, authors, and actors contribu contributed to the Renaissance. 
Langston Hughes, a popular poet and writer, created pieces that celebrated black pride and poems that revealed the hardship of the lowest people in America. Painters like Laura Wheeler Waring and Edward A. Harleston focused on the daily lives of blacks, hailing from various social classes, while Aaron Douglas's black and white drawings symbolized the African American race. The Harlem Renaissance erased the anomaly of Af African-American race by bringing their art and literature to the forefront of public interest through the young people's enjoyment of jazz and art. No longer were the contributions of blacks to American culture ignored. Instead, they were embraced. <laughs> the blue buttons! What do you... What do, what, 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 I don't... <laughs> we need bloopers! <laughs> what are we Wait, can, am I going to be your bloopers? Yeah, yeah, I know! <laughs> uh, quite famous black uh, civil rights movement person. Oh, God. <laughs>